this video, we're gonna show you the correct technique for insertion of an NG tube or a nasogastric tube. Um, and we'll also give you a few tips and tricks that we use when we're doing this skill. So of course, before you get started, you want to make sure that you've determined which nair is more patent and that the patient doesn't have a deviated septum. So you know which nair to use. Then you're gonna to wanna to lay a towel across the patient's chest. I am telling you, I have had patients throw up on me. This step is worth it. So now you wanna grab your uh, NG2 package, take it out of the package so that you can measure the length that you need for insertion. In this case, we are using one of the uh, harder plastic uh, Salem sumps, but you might have a softer one. So you're gonna measure from the tip of the nose to the earlobe and down to the xiphoid process. And then you wanna get a piece of tape and mark that spot on the NG tube itself. Now, some people will use a marker, some people will use tape. It's entirely up to you. Just make sure that you've marked that location. You're also gonna wanna go ahead and prep your tape for your securing device. So you wanna rip off about three to four inch piece of tape and then cut a slit in it about two thirds of the way up. So it should look like a little pair of pants. And I'll usually put it on the table or maybe on the side rail, just somewhere I can grab it easily. Then uh, give the patient a cup of water so they can sip and swallow while you insert the tube. Of course, our big oversized Ken doll can't hold the cup, so just use your imagination here. Now you want to lubricate the end of the NG tube. And then you wanna slowly begin inserting the tube. Now, of course, uh, let the patient know what's going on, have them sit straight up, have them tilt their chin to their chest. And you wanna insert the tube straight back and down, not up, up goes to the brain, that's not where we're headed. So aim straight back and down. When you feel a little bit of resistance, have the patient sip and swallow from their cup of water. You can also twist it a little bit as you push and that should help. Just don't ever force it past firm resistance. So you're gonna continue inserting until you reach your measurement. And again, that might be a piece of tape, that might be a, a marker. And then you're going to secure the tube with one hand while you take the tape that you have already cut and secure the tube to the bridge of the nose, wrap those two little pant legs around the, the tube itself. So now to check placement, you're gonna use the 60 mil syringe to aspirate the gastric contents. They should be greenish or brownish, may have some undigested food, that's normal. Now you just need a little bit. You're gonna take that gastric aspirate, clamp your tube, disconnect your syringe, and check the pH of that gastric aspirate. So you want to see it less than four showing that it is in stomach acid so that you can confirm placement. If it's more than that, or if at any point during insertion the patient starts co choking or coughing, pull that tube out, it is not in the right place. So now you can clamp the tube and secure it to the patient's gown, usually just with a piece of tape, and wait for an abdominal x-ray. Even if your pH is right, you cannot put anything down this tube until that x-ray confirms placement. It really is the gold standard here. So make sure the client's in a comfortable position while you clean up your supplies. Um, just make sure that you keep that 60 mil syringe at bedside because you're going to need it later. Again, we haven't used the tube yet, so we'll have to flush it once it's confirmed. So I wanna point out here that for the longest time, we actually used an air bolus to confirm placement. So you might still see nurses in practice doing that. That practice is no longer recommended because it's not reliable. You could actually hear an air bolus even if it's in the lungs. So that gold standard is the abdominal x-ray, otherwise known as a KUB. If you hear that, KUB stands for kidneys, ureters, and bladders. In other words, it's an abdominal x-ray. So I know that this is a skill you don't get to see very often unless you're in some place like an ER or an OR. So I hope this was helpful. Now go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.